Welcome back to Yoga Express, your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh. I'm your host for this program. And once again, we have Josie and Heard with us right here to help you stretch with us on the mat. Josie and I are going to take you through some seated stretches today. We're going to work through the postcard that we talked about yesterday. We have a very simple postcard that contains 48 ailment-specific stretches. All the standing postures are in green, seated in red, and then you have the prone in blue, and the purple ones are the supine postures. So if you come and stretch with us right here on the mat, we give you a copy of this postcard. We also give you a copy of my third title, Yoga Secrets, which contains eight plus two ailment-specific cards which means if you're looking at improving your health or improving uh, your ability to bend your knees, for example, if you have arthritis of the knees or you want to prevent arthritis of the knees, we take you through a lot of knee bending stretches. So there's one card that takes you through a lot of knee benders. If you want to prevent asthma, for example, you do a lot of chest openers. You open up your pipes. You learn to do a lot of chest openers, take your shoulders back. So we help you talk. We, we talk you through all these stretches. We stretch with you as well. So you'll get a copy of both of these plus a copy of the Sun Salutation poster, a very detailed poster. Yoga Express is filmed in the studios of Manhattan Neighborhood Network. We air Monday through Friday on Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Fios 35 at 1.30 in the afternoon, Eastern Time. That's New York time. And uh, today's episode has been made possible, of course, thanks to Josian. On behalf of Josian and me, it's been made possible because of our facilitators, Richard Swanson and Kristen Kofer, our director, Danny Darrow. And Rich, thank you so much all of, to all of you for helping make this episode possible for the wonderful Gobos, the lighting and the sound system. And also thanks to Manhattan Neighborhood Network for hosting this episode here today. Josian, let's continue where we mm -hmm. stopped yesterday. Mm -hmm. I know you like twists, right? Oh, yes. But I having said that, I, I want your opinion. I want our viewers to hear a little more about why you like twists so much. It feels so good. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful way of putting it. It just feels amazing. You're right. Yes, it feels so. We, we feel. If it refreshed, it feel. I can't see it better. It you you just feel like good. there's a gush of fresh air, yes, right? That's yes. literally what's happening. It's, it's, if you don't do it, you can't describe it. I mean, it's right. impossible <laughs> to describe unless you do it yourself. Right, right. We need to experience it. We have to it. encourage people to do it because it's so That's right, a lot beneficial. Of, right. to our, our and body. they can just twist. If you are just sitting at home watching television, you can just do simple twists. Anything that will give you abdominal twists. Even on a chair. I'm talking. Even, even in a chair. chair. Even with, Exactly. You could be sitting in a chair with your legs on the floor and just and hold just, on to the back of the chair, just, yeah, turn, around. To, turn around. Just do all these twists. What's happening when we do twists, Josiane, and I'm sure you feel it, and that's why we all experience this too. Every time we twist, we talk our upper body to one side, the lower body goes the other side. So you're wringing your body, upper and lower body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're squeezing the muscles, the obliques on the sides of our waist. So when we do that, just for a few seconds, we're, we're depriving our organs up and below in the upper and lower torso. We're depriving our organs of fresh air mm -hmm. and fresh blood. And when we untangle ourselves, when we untwist ourselves, Fresh oxygen, fresh blood rushes to refresh these organs, and that's why we feel so wonderful. Mm -hmm. So it's that moment of deprivation that leads to this wonderful release that actually gives us that endorphin high, that beautiful feel-good juices all getting released at the same time. So let's do this. Let's pick up where we left off yesterday. Josiane and I are going to t uh, take you through the posture called Ardha Matsendra. Ardha is half, Matsya is fish, Matsendra, lord of the fishes. What I want you to do, if you're stretching with us, tuck your left heel under your right buttock. 
take your right foot over the left knee. You want to make sure that your right foot is flat on the floor with your toes facing the front of the room or your mat. Now you want to push your right knee in. So when you do that, your upper body automatically talks to the right. Now it twists itself to the right side. Now what I'm going to do this time, we're going to do a slightly different, not exactly different, a slightly uh, extended move of the same posture. We're going to try and take our hand, right hand behind us first. And instead of taking our left elbow over this knee, what we're going to do is first try and move slowly into this posture. Push the right knee in and twist your upper body a little more to face the back. So this way you're giving a wonderful stretch to your abductor muscles, the outside of your upper right thigh. And of course, you're also getting a beautiful compression of your obliques on the right side of your midriff and a stretch of the obliques on the left side of your waist. Let's inhale, come back in, and let's try this on the other side before we take you through the full posture. It's a variation. This is, eh? It's a variation. It's a nice prep for the full posture. Mm -hmm. And even, even when we do get into the full posture, it's only called a half spinal twist. The real full spinal twist is when you tuck both your palms together. I'm not ready for that yet, so I'm not going to demonstrate that. I'm not even going to try. Uh, tuck your right heel under your left buttock. Take your left foot over your right knee. This is also just in this, this preparation, uh, preparatory posture is also good for us to recognize that our bodies are different on both either side. Mm -hmm. One side stretches a little more, one side cooperates oh, a yes. little more. Sure. Now this leg, the abduct abductor muscles in the outside of my upper left thigh, they're a little more cooperative. <laughs> So I'm going to push my left knee in, talk my upper body to the left. Now hold on to the left knee with the right hand. Take your left hand behind. Let's take our left hand behind and take your left shoulder back and turn to look behind us. Hold it. Ardha Matsendra. Danny, could we have that music up just a little bit? It just helps us focus. Hold it. Inhale. Let's release, and this time we'll go straight into Marichas. And now the full, uh, do you want to do the uh, Ardha Matsin, the actual twist? Because we did that yesterday. We showed them a variation today. You don't want to, I mean, no, let's go into Marichas, and yes. that way we're going to mm -hmm. try and finish a few more postures today. Extend the left leg all the way out. Now, if we have our director, Danny Darrow, in the control room, could we get the music up a little bit? And if it's rich out there, please have the music up. Extend your left leg out, flex your left foot, bring your right foot close to the inside of your upper left thigh, bring your right knee up, bring it out, keep your right knee out a little bit to the side. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to inhale the right arm up and bring it, wrap it around the right knee. So let's do that. Hold on to your right ankle with your left hand, inhale the right arm up, lean forward, exhale, wrap your right hand around your right knee and then take your left hand from behind and try to clasp the opposite hands. I say try because I think I'm a little rusty. I got it there. <laughs> Hold on to your opposite fingers. Once you've made that connection, turn to look right. You want to lift your chin up, take your left shoulder back, turn to look right. Inhale and release. Let's extend the right leg out. Bend the left leg at the knee. Bring the left foot close to the inside of the upper right thigh. Your left knee goes out just a little bit. Hold on to your left ankle with your right hand. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale. Fold from the hip. Wrap your left hand around your left knee. And then take your right hand from behind and clasp the opposite fingers. And then turn to look left. So when you turn to look left, your right shoulder tends to follow Maybe I you. I move a little bit so you can see my hands. That's a good idea. Now notice how Josian's turn to the side so you can watch her in profile. You can see that her hands are clasped nicely. She's probably holding the opposite wrists. Now viewers <laughs> at home, if you cannot hold on to your wrists, that's okay. You can do what I'm doing. I'm just holding on to the tips of my fingers. Look over your left shoulder, take your right shoulder back, get a wonderful, wonderful stretch. Make sure your right foot is flexed, inhale and release. Now keep your right leg extended. The posture we just came out of is called Marichasan. Marich is ray of light. 
Marich is also a name of a sage. Now we're going to take you through a pasta called Janu Sirsha. Janu is knee, Sirsha is head. Literally, it's head to knee. Now, my head may not touch my knee anytime today or in the next 50 years, <laughs> but the idea is to make the effort. You never know. You every never day know. That's every day a little more. A every day a little more. more, right? Yes. So, <laughs> you never know. One of these days I might be able to do that. I'm Attach the. <laughs> That's true. We should always expect the unexpected. My dad used to say that. Of course, he's right. Att he's Attach watching you. The soul. He's watching over us, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Attach the sole of your left foot to the inside of your upper right thigh. Bring your left knee down all the way and turn your upper body to face the extended leg. You want to flex your foot, your right foot, the foot on the extended leg. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead palms facing in. Clasp your fingers in any manner you've been trained to do. You could have your index fingers out, you could have all your fingers out, or you could clasp them over the way I'm doing, all your fingers crossed over. Now, take a deep breath in, inhale, exhale, fold from the hip. Wrap your right hand over your foot or hold on to your right big toe. Remember, when you hold on to the big toe, you're massaging the nerves that end in the big toe. Uh, the nerves that begin in the eyes, the optic nerves, end in the big toe. So keep exhaling and pull your foot back. Pull your toes back so that the back of your legs get a wonderful stretch. The hamstrings and the sciatic nerves get a beautiful, beautiful stretch. You might notice Josiane's head is on her knee. So she has done justice to the name, head to knee, Janu Sirsha. Inhale, let's come up, clasp your palms together. Exhale and release. Let's switch legs. You wanna make sure you stretch on both sides, always. Extend your left leg out, attach the sole of your right foot to the inside of the upper left thigh. So you wanna make sure your right knee is down, all the way down. Turn your upper body to face the extended leg. Inhale, take your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Clasp your palms together, exhale, fold from the hip. Clasp your uh, feet with your hands, hold on to your toes with your hands or take your fingers all the way over to the soles of your feet. Make sure you feel that beautiful, delicious stretch in the back of your knees. Keep exhaling and fold. Clasp your palms together. Inhale. Let's come up with a nice straight back. And this time, keep your arms where they are. Extend the right leg out. Paschimottan asan, Paschimottan bird beak or east facing. We're going to exhale, fold from the hip again. Now you could place your palms over your feet or you could hold on to your big toes. I'm gonna to hold on to my big toes because that helps me pull my upper body forward so I have a grip on something. Now every time you exhale, you can bring your body forward just a little more. Keep exhaling. Paschimottanasan. Clasp your palms together, inhale, let's come up. Exhale and release. Hi, John. We're going to take you through another posture called Go Mokha Asan. Go is cow, Mokha is face, cow face. And we'll explain to you while we're in the posture why it's called cow face. Tuck your right left foot, left heel under the right buttock. This time, cross the right foot all the way over the left knee. This time you want to make sure, in this posture, you want to make sure that the soles of both your feet are facing the back of the room. You might notice that Josiane's posture is a little more intense. It's a little deeper than mine is. I have my limitations, especially I on this like side. I sit like in front of my computer. You sit like this? <laughs> well, there you go. She has had a lot of practice already. I don't. When I sit in the computer, I'm sitting like and we sit in a chair. Does? It obliged me to keep my, my spine straight. That's true. And also, I, I tend to sit cross-legged on the computer sometimes. That's helping me stretch the abductor muscles. I'm not muscles. watching a slouch after a while. Right. This way you so hold yourself up. That's a good point. That's mm -hmm. a good point. Viewers at home, remember that if you feel that your posture is deteriorating over a period of time, be aware, be conscious, be aware of what you're doing, be aware of what your body's limitations are, and work on it. 
So keep the soles of both your feet facing back. Your right knee is up, left arm goes up. Inhale, exhale, dip your left hand behind your uh, shoulders. Take your right hand from behind, clasp the opposite fingers and hold. Lift your chin up, you turn around take so your shoulders back. Me. Yeah, actually that's a great idea. Josiane's going to turn around so you can see how she's clasping the fingers in her opposite hand and also the way she's got her feet, the soles of both her feet are facing back. You want to bring your chin up, take your shoulders back, very nice. Inhale and let's release. Let's switch over to the other side. You want to make sure you stretch both sides. So I've just about stretched a little bit of my abductors on the upper right side of my right thigh. That's right, <laughs> upper right thigh. Tuck your right heel under the left buttock. Left foot goes over the right knee. Make sure the soles of both your feet are facing the back of the room. Left knee is up. Again, I feel this side cooperates just a little more. It feels side. better, right? Now, left knee is up. Inhale the right arm up. Exhale, dip your right hand behind your shoulders, behind your trapezius muscles. Take the left hand from behind. Clasp the opposite fingers. And once you've made that connection, open up your shoulders. So your triceps get a beautiful stretch here as well. Inhale and lift. Go Mukha, cow face. Actually, while we are holding this, I'm told by some of my teachers that the elbow, the raised elbow, looks like the ear of a cow. And also, when you have your knees aligned the way Josian has them, when they're really nicely aligned, they look like the mouth of a cow, the face of a cow. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. We can let our imagination run. <laughs> but whatever it is, we want to get our stretch. Inhale and release. Now, let's not get too way out of this posture. Let's swing right into the next one. Let's transition into capote or pigeon. That's another of your favorites. Yes. Swing the left leg all the way back very gracefully. You might notice that all these 48 stretches in our sequence actually transition very well from one end to the other. It's like a dance motion. Once you get the hang of each of these postures, you know how to get in and out safely. You could actually do them in about 15 minutes. Now, pigeon or capote or pigeon, you have your left leg extended all the way out. Now, if you really want to get a good stretch, you want to push the left leg further back to make sure your pelvis sits on the mat. Now, Take a deep breath in, and if I don't finish this posture the way Josian wants to, <laughs> I'm not going to hear the end of it. So exhale, fold from the hip. There's also a very relaxing moment in this posture. If your forehead touches the ground, that's wonderful. If it doesn't, work at it, and it will eventually. Press with your palms, let's come up, and let's switch legs. Bring the left leg forward, extend the right leg all the way out to the back. We should be able to do another seven. And then, now again, I feel this side cooperating a little more. I can go a little deeper. Place your palms. The closer your palms are to your hips, the deeper is your stretch, and the stronger your back gets, because you have to strengthen your back to hold yourself up. Now exhale, fold from the hip. Inhale, let's come up. And let's you come into position a little bit more longer. Hold it a little <laughs> <laughs> because you're feeling good. Yes. We can, no, but we're going to take our viewers through seven more. So let's see if we, <laughs> we could probably close in our favorite. We'll close in pigeon. <laughs> let's sit on our heels, and we're going to take our viewers through a posture called Maha Mudra, grand mm -hmm. gesture. It looks very compact, looks very easy, but it's very very effective because did, of the way fold. Did over. you notice one thing? I couldn't do this posture way before. Back. That's right. You said injury. How's it doing now? Feeling better? Obviously, you're doing well. <laughs> Good job. Well done. That's what happens when Thanks you keep practicing. Program. Thank you. See? <laughs> Great endorsement. Thank you, Josiane. That's what happens when we keep practicing. Mm -hmm. We feel stronger, and at one point, we're just getting into it. I know, and I remember. That's right. You used to make adaptations, yeah. right? Yeah. It's true. Take your hands behind your back. So what we're gonna do, Josiane is also, Josiane, why don't you turn around? Josiane's gonna turn around. Now I'm gonna clasp my opposite elbows, but those of you at home, you wanna take this a little further, you might wanna do what Josiane's doing. Actually, I'm gonna face you. Do what we're trying, what I'm trying to do and what Josiane probably is doing. Hold your palms in what's called a reverse namaste. So you wanna clasp your palms together. That way you get a little more of a, you get a bit of a deeper stretch. Take your shoulders back. 
we're gonna exhale and fold from the hip exhale and fold I could press with the tops of your feet to bring your forehead down inhale let's come up exhale and release we're going to take our viewers directly into paripurna nava or boat full boat and let's face the front left side of the mat extend both your legs out in front of you tighten your lower abdominal muscles tighten your low back muscles and what we're going to do is inhale first Extend your legs out, flex your feet, inhale, bring your arms up to shoulder height, palms are facing each other. We're going to inhale, tighten the core muscles, so all the muscles just below the navel, the lower abdominal muscles, the lower back muscles. Inhale and lift. Now if you notice, Josiane goes much higher and a very good balance. I go as high as I can, exhale and release. So if you're able to go one inch deeper every day that's what you want to work towards you don't have to do as high as Josiane does she does it she's got a lot of practice and she's this. very flexible she loves it <laughs> she loves torturing herself but yes I know you like it and that's another thing when you enjoy something yes. a lot more you're feeling lighthearted you're able to go deeper into your postures mm -hmm. and you're doing very well that's a good good um, goal to aim for but if you want to start where I am that's fine it's you need to start somewhere so you could start where I am aim to get where Josiane is we're going to take you through another this posture is one of my favorites but the corner bound angle or cobbler a lot of people call this cobbler in uh, North America and I, can, I think I can understand why in India a lot of cobblers sit literally like this with this huge iron nail metal mm -hmm. nail and they, they put you they hold it with their feet they, they hold it with exactly they hold the nail with their feet and then they uh, put your, sh your footwear over that and start hammering away and within a few minutes you know it's they've done a great job hold on to both your feet and push your knees down cobbler pasha but the corner bound angle Bring your elbows out, exhale, fold from the hip. Now if your forehead touches your big toes, that's wonderful. If it doesn't, don't get discouraged. Don't bring your knees in to be able to fold over. You want to keep your knees down. Inhale, let's come up. Let's take you through a posture called Mala Asan. Mala is garland. Come up on your haunches. So you're going to come up. Your heels are closer than your toes, your toes are out. Place your palms together, push your knees out with your elbows, bring your chin up, chest is out, shoulders as far back as you can go, and look up. Look into the camera, Josiane, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hold it, mala or garland. Exhale and release. Extend your legs out in front of you. Supta Namaskara, supine prayer. This is a seated uh, posture, but we call it supine prayer because when you go deeper and deeper, it looks almost as if you're supine. Place both your hands to the right side of your hip. Exhale, dip your forehead to the ground. Keep your toes where they are. Supta Namaskara, supine prayer. Inhale, let's come up and let's twist to the other side. Place both palms on the left side. Exhale and dip. <laughs> inhale if you find this posture gets a little intense with your hands too close to your body take them further away the further you are further your hands are from your body the easier it is to dip mm -hmm. forward inhale let's come up let's get into prone position as long as the cameras i think we have plenty of time as long as the cameras are rolling we'll take you through a couple more prone postures this time come in prone position come down on your belly place your palms directly below your shoulders toes are curled in you want to keep your chin on the floor, inhale, and lift your buttocks off of the floor. Inhale, and lift. So push, press with your toes, glide your knees closer to your chest. So you're bringing your body, your buttocks come up. Inhale, release. Keep inhaling, let's come up. Oh, that, by the way, oh, before we go into the next one, the titles are not up yet, that's good. When we come up in this posture with the buttocks up, it's called Ashtanga Namaskara, Ashta Anga. Ashta is eight, Anga is limbs, Namaskara is prayer. It's eight-limbed prayer. 
Basically, eight parts of the body touch the floor. That's the chin, chest, two hands, two knees, and the two toes. So once you release this, come straight out, extend your legs behind you, press with the palms, inhale, and lift. Bhujang Asan, Bhujang or Cobra. Now you could go up really nice and high. It's good for the back too. You strengthen your back. Use, engage your low back muscles. And this time, take your palms off of the floor. When you inhale and bring yourself up, you strengthen your back. <clears throat> Place your palms back on the floor. Make a fist with your hands. So tuck your thumbs into your fingers, into your fist, into your palm. I've forgotten my English, okay. <laughs> Tuck your thumb into your palm, wrap your four fingers over your thumb, and tuck your fist, make it into a fist, and tuck your fist into the groin area, in the pelvic area. You wanna make sure that your bones don't chafe on the floor. So once you're nice and secure, you've got a little bit of padding in the groin region, uncurl your toes, press with the tops of your palm, chin is on the floor, inhale, Tighten your low back, engage your low back muscles, inhale, and lift your knees off of the floor. Keep your chin on the floor, exhale, and release. Extend your palms out in front of you. Your hands are out in front of you. Now I have these books out here, so I wanna make sure I make some space. We're gonna take you through, oh, the posture we just came out of is called salab or locust. Now I'm gonna take you through a posture called nav. It's simply nav, not a full boat, it's just a canoe. My locust get, got better since last time because I do my back bend. Ah, so your back is getting yes. stronger. There you go, see, mm -hmm. so doing back bends is helping not just in your standing posture, it's also in the prone. Okay, extend your arms, very nice. Extend your arms out in front of you, palms are facing each other, tops of your feet on the floor, Navasan, I think the titles are back again. Mm -hmm. Inhale, engage your low back muscles. Inhale, lift your hands and your knees off of the floor at the same time. Inhale and lift. Now, since your backs, uh, uh, both Josian and I have been practicing a little bit. I think Josian, you've done a greater job of this. Since we've been practicing back bends, our back gets stronger. We're able to lift a little higher each time. Exhale and release. Take your left hand, reach for the left ankle. Right hand reaches for the right ankle. Once you've made that connection, titles are going, so we have about a minute left, half a minute. Archer's bow, dhanurasan. Once you made the connection, bring your knees as close as you can, chin to the floor, inhale, engage your low back muscles, and lift your knees and chest off of the floor. Inhale and lift. Hold it, exhale, and release. We have the titles rolling. We're gonna come up, press with your palms, toes curled in. Let's come up into frog, manduk asan. Bring your knees closer, keep your toes curled in, place the elbows on the floor. Manduk or frog, engage your low abdominal muscles to breathe in this posture. Think of it as a nice rest posture. Mm -hmm, it is. It is, isn't it? And then we'll close this episode today by getting into plank position. So palms directly below the shoulders, your feet are, you're on your toe, your toes are curled in, legs are extended, strengthen your low back and hold. Place your knees back on the floor. We're gonna go in supine position. Before we do that, we'd like to thank our facilitators, Richard.